Good afternoon, everyone. It's Shamila Ramjohan coming to you from the Red Corner Chat from the beautiful Johannesburg, South Africa. And today my guest is Latabo Cooper, who is also in Johannesburg. Latabo is 24 years old. He's from Soshangube, Pretoria, and is currently a student at the University of Pretoria. He is a Mr. Proteus South Africa 2020, president of a fellowship called President Nelson Mandela and Lady Diana, Princess of Wales Fellowship, a public speaker, life coach and mentor, presidential award recipient, Doctors Without Borders ambassador, Mr. Commonwealth South Africa first runner up 2018, a one day leader, session or season six top 90, former junior station commander of the Vonderboom Police, with the South African Police Services, that is so interesting. Former Junior City Councillor of Pretoria, former Chairperson of the Girls and Boys Educational Movement, and lots more. Letao, that is a mouthful. Wow. How are you feeling this afternoon? I'm feeling thrilled, man. You know, I couldn't wait for the interview and I was quite nervous about it. Yo, I didn't know what way to begin and what to say. I wanted to prepare something, but I just told myself, I just speak from the heart and I hope people get inspired by my story. I'm sure people are really going to be inspired because I read through your bio and I thought, what, 24 years old and this is what he's achieved so far? What's he going to achieve <laughs> in another 24 years? So maybe let's just start by you telling us a little bit about yourself. Who is Litabo? Well, Litabo is a 24-year-old, uh, currently residing in Hetfield because I'm studying at the University of Pretoria, and a full-time volunteering mentor at Tax Sports High. Uh, I'm a life coach, um, a business associate with Perfect Alliance. I'm the president of the Nelson Mandela and Lady Diana Princess of Wales Fellowship. I'm um, also the, currently Mr. Putia South Africa 2020. Please tell me a little bit about the fellowship. What is the it? Fellowship. How did you achieve that? And uh, what is the future for you in it? in it? Okay, the President Nelson Mandela Fellowship and Lady Diana Princess of Wales Fellowship was started by me this year. Um, I've been doing a lot of foundations and I have been struggling to keep my momentum, my momentum with them because I've been moving in different areas around South Africa along my journey into humanitarian work. So I wanted something that is consistent, especially now if, as I've won Mr. Putia South Africa, I wanted to impart leadership skills to young people. And I started the fellowship in honor of the late Princess Diana and President Nelson Mandela. So you started it? Yes, I started it. And where are you with it now? Uh, right now, we are locating schools around Pretoria. Right now, we're busy with Taxports High, where school Africans maces. So we are engaging in a lot of schools because I'm not only working with it, only with myself. Some of my uh, schoolmates are with me. And then, yeah, we are pushing, pushing as much as we can. Um, next week, we are going on a camp. We are taking the kids to camp. Uh, we will be teaching them resilience into leadership imparting some leadership skills in them. When I instill some humanitarian skills, how to raise funds, how to um, engage with people. Uh, there are a lot of things that we are working on. We had a lot of things that we are really, really working on. And yeah, that's one of the things that we are trying to achieve. Leadership without expecting, without expecting anything in return. Leadership where you do things because you like them, where you inspire people. That's what we are trying to give into young people. Because as you can see, we are living in South Africa where the crime rate is high because of corruption. Now we're trying to bring humanitarian work within men and women. Let's do it because we love it, not because we want to gain something out of it. So how did COVID-19 affect this organization of yours? It has truly affected the whole thing. We had sponsors. Um, since well, uh, COVID-19 has affected our country's economy and some of the countries had to close, some of the uh, companies had to close down. So we lost some of the sponsorship. So I had to dig into my own pocket. I used some of my funding from the competition, uh, the 50,000 that I won, and I imparted it within the competition, within the, hum the humanitarian movement so that I can help the kids uh, um, get the appropriate skills they need, like we're taking them on a camp next week Friday. 
That is amazing. Well done. And, you know, just for you to put your own money into this says a lot about the type of person you are. And, you know, we always talk about pageants and we talk about beauty with a purpose. And here you are, Mr. Pretoria, South Africa. So do you maybe want to take me through that journey? Um, well, I was inspired by my mother and my grandmother. They were all into pageantry. And wow, to be quite honest, I was suffering from low self-esteem from primary to high school. And then my first pageant that I entered was Mr. Hillview, which, is, which was our high school pageant. And it was quite a challenge to be that one of the, bo the boys who didn't talk much in school and then taking such a leap of faith into pageantry, being slim body. I wasn't buff. I'm still slim as now. And then I just went into it and boy, oh boy, I didn't win the first time but I told myself I'll keep working on it until I get it right. Then I went for Mr. Commonwealth South Africa, where I had a vision again into leadership, but I didn't win the competition. I became first runner up. And then it was quite a challenge raising funds um, because with Mr. Commonwealth South Africa, you have to raise a certain amount of money for all, for, for, for your gen within the competition and then the endorsement that you will be uh, a patron to. So it was a challenge. I remember this other time I had to sell two of my laptops because I couldn't reach a certain target within the money that I had to raise. It was quite hard because I had a dream of inspiring young people into leadership. And I, a lot of people, they were like, why don't you go into politics? The thing with myself is that I don't like debating. I love filling gaps where I see that something needs to be done in a particular area. I don't like debating around a certain problem where you see there is a problem. Change needs to be imparted there we need to do something, let's get onto it, let's not debate about it, and let's create an impact. So Mr. Commonwealth South Africa gave me a platform to voice out issues that I wanted to voice out, especially within the pageantry industry. I wanted to push into leadership because all people think about within pageants, it's all about um, beauty, being muscular, you know, being fit, you know. So I wanted to change the concept behind that thing and introduce leadership within pageantry. And so far, I am coming good, as I think. So do you have the support from other people as well? Yes, I do. But uh, my biggest, biggest supporter is my mother. With all the projects that I have been doing, my mother has been that one, two person who has got my back, motivating me. I think out of a lot of people, she has been a spearhead throughout and she has been contributing some of her money within my projects. You know, we're like not getting sponsors. I remember this other time I had to um, do a, 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 a metric function. It's a school that couldn't afford to uh, to host a metric ball for their metric. So I decided to take some of my monthly allowance and impart it within the the high tea that I was I wanted to organize for them so that the learners could feel special and then exit their metric here with style. And then my mother helped out throughout the whole projects as part of contributing towards my portfolio of becoming Mr. Commonwealth South Africa and. Yes, it was a success. All the speakers were there. And I got dropped by some of the speakers, which was one of the challenges that were associated with the journey. But boy, oh boy, I came victorious. Even if I didn't win the title, I became first runner up. And then that was a blessing for me. So was, this, was that the start of your journey, uh, the pageantry journey? The pageantry journey, yes. It started the Miss Anel Diswad. You know, she made uh, the whole journey quite extravagant. I've never... I had sessions going into hotels, you know, sitting with workshops, being trained, self-confidence, how to walk, how to talk. You know, it has been one great journey and then it has been good towards me, myself, self-development. I got to transform, get out of my own shell so that I can be comfortable in who I am so that I can show the people this is Leta Wukupa and then this is what I stand for. I've been trained quite exceptionally throughout the challenge. It has tested me in a lot of ways, but I came out there with good character and great resilience. Well, look at you now. I mean, you have so much of confidence um, and I'm so excited that I'm actually speaking to you. So uh, you did mention to me that for the last pageant, you received a crown and that prompted me to actually bring my crown so we both can put our crowns on now. Are you happy? Are you ready for that? <laughs> yes, I'm ready, ma'am. Okay, so I have my crown right here, but I, I can't really clip it on. So do you want to put yours on? <laughs> there you go. Jeez, I haven't worn this for a while. So just going to yeah. leave it. It's quite heavy. It's my first time wearing a crown. So yeah, I can't keep it on for quite a long time. 
um, because you can't move the way you want to. You know, we've been trained that uh, when you should put your, your crown in a search whenever you have important functions. So you just can't rock it whenever you, you need to respect it because it's something that you're gonna hand over to somebody else. It's a symbol of power and authority and the change that you're about to embark within your journey. journey. So a crown is something that needs to be respected. So I have something that's something that I'm learning now. So can I have a, a, a better look at your crown? Sorry? Can I have a closer look at your crown? Okay, ma'am. That is stunning. Wow. Yeah. With all those pearls and rhino stones. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the first time, in, the first time in, uh, I see such a crown. Like I stated, like I've never worn a crown. So this is the first time that I am actually wearing a crown, using a crown. And yeah, I'm one person, I don't like wearing such things in public. But right now I'm forced to, so I have to get out of my own shell and all. Yeah, I don't like attention, but it comes with it. So whenever you are within the spotlight, you just have to rock them out and stand out in public. Yeah. Well, I can so relate to that, you know. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's such an achievement. You've earned it. So why not, you know, just to go out there and just wear it because it looks so good on you anyway. Thank but you. I was actually quite intrigued because normally with... Um, men and pageants, um, mm -hmm. most of the pageantries, they don't hand out crowns to the guys. It's yes, just for women. And here I see someone with a crown. So yes, is it just the, the only organization in South Africa that hands out crowns to men? Yeah, the way I see it, because I was also part of Mr. South Africa this year. Yeah, I started the journey, I started the journey of Mr. South Africa 2020 last year. But the problem that I had with Mr. Pro with Mr. Uh, South Africa was that my schoolwork was getting in the way of all the projects that I had to do. So it was not going to be successful. And another thing is that I didn't have the purpose towards the crown. So I didn't know what to stand up for. And then within the pageantry industry, it's important to know what you stand up for and what you want to represent. So I had to pull myself out because of those reasons. You know, talking about studies, Latabo, what, what actually are you studying? I'm currently studying uh, education with psychology and I'm also doing other studies within the research of preventative medicine and integrative medicine uh, with Dr. Anton. And what year are you in? I'm doing my second year and I've studied before I graduated last year from sports sciences. Um, so right now I'm doing my second year in education. Awesome. Sports sciences. So you are like another Casta Semenya. Yeah, I was doing cross country. Um, I started my cross country journey in high school. Um, I had a coach, Mr. Swag, who saw a potential within me. He's like, you would do good in long distance running. And then I started from there and then until varsity when I got in with sports sciences. But that it's wasn't my... That wasn't yes. my actual dream. I wanted to study medicine, but since well, I couldn't qualify, I needed something within the health industry. So I ended up venturing out into sports sciences and then sports science gave me a glimpse into preventative medicine and integrative medicine. So in a way, God has aligned my journey into what I wanted to become. It's not exact as medicine, but it's something within the health industry. It seems as though you just want to Put your fingers on everything and you want to try out different things are you that type of person where you like just look forward to challenges and you want to just go out there and do something different because you get bored no 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 no. Um, i'm multi-talented and it's quite confusing for a person like me because i'm so good in a lot of things that i want to try out everything um, I have a motto towards myself, try everything so that you can know what to master. So I see where I'm li literally going into. And then I love tapping into a lot of things. Um, you know, I think that's one of my personality traits. And yeah, it's so hard. It's literally hard, especially to keep up with everything. Yeah, I think it's something that I'm really struggling with internally because when I see an opportunity, I just grab it and fly with it. It seems like you're a real go-getter and a disruptor, and uh, there's a lot of things that you juggle at once. How do you actually manage your time? My time management, people, a lot of people, I love telling them that I, I don't think I would function without a diary. I literally have a book of my goals, and then I have a diary for myself, which I use on my daily functions. So I have this book with goals. I literally write everything that I need to achieve within a particular year. And then I have to make sure that I get it. Dark or blue, there are two dates. As a life coach, I was taught that you need to have deadlines for all your goals so that you can attain them. 
So I have that book and then I have my diary book. So each goal, I take it one step at a time and then I execute, execute, execute. End of the year, I do an internal reflection uh, on the things that I wanted and then I just scratch everything off that I've achieved. So that's what, that was, you know, quite thrilling. This is a method that I have learned to master and you know what, I'm quite comfortable with it and I'm aiming to achieve more. This is not the end of me and yeah, South Africa is here to still the, see the best within me. There's a lot coming from you that I can tell you. Well, we have two months to go before the year end. Um, yes, exactly two months time, it will be New Year's Eve. Yes, ma'am. Did you start planning for 2021 yet? Yes, I have started planning for 2021. Um, uh, there's an EC post uh, that has been uh, assigned within uh, the university, the Tulip. So I have contested for it. I'm still waiting for the feedback from it. Again, we'll be going in different schools around uh, Pretoria helping kids, uh, building a bridge between high school and university, helping kids go into varsity. So it's part of uh, a project that is close to my heart, dealing with young people. So that's one of my goals. So even if I don't get in, but I still have a way, I still have the, 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 uh, the, the fellowship that I'll be help, that I'll be working with other kids. So everything, I have my plan A, my plan B. So if my plan A doesn't work, I still have my plan B, you know, everything is the, everything is penned out for 2020. So I don't want to reveal much because what I'm about to do right now, it's a gift that I want to give to South African uh, kids who have been dreaming to go into medicine, but who couldn't. So it's something similar to uh, medicine, but it's not exactly medicine. So they won't be called doctor or something. So in my way of empowering myself, I want to empower other kids. So this is my gift to the kids. So I don't want to reveal much about it until everything has been certified. I wish you the best of luck. Just, you, you've achieved so much. Um, surely there were obstacles and difficulties, challenges along the way. And I know you mentioned some of it already where your mom came on board and helped you through it. Mm -hmm. Any other challenges that stand out for you that you would like to mention? Um, you know, after my father uh, passed away in 2004, I didn't know then that my father's death actually affected me. You know, being a young kid, um, having uh, a good family support. Um, I didn't realize that it affected me, especially within my school work. People actually don't know that I didn't know how to read until grade six. And it was quite an obstacle. It was quite an obstacle. Then today when I see or when I reflect on the past, that today I'm actually a good public speaker that came second, Silver in the Sagarona Fish, uh, Festival. So it has been one quite of a challenge to be quite honest because um, I think that's one of the things that contributed within my low self-esteem, you know. So my father's death has affected my academics in a huge way. So that was one of the, the milestones that I had to embark within primary high school and into varsity. So I had to literally build bridges for myself so that I can be on the same level as other kids. It was quite a challenge. And right now, that's why I want to help a lot of kids who are in high school in all aspects of life who had the similar challenges as I had um, within mathematics, uh, arithmetic, wherever possible, so they can achieve their dreams. So that's why I ventured out into life coaching to help kids who are in the similar or who had the similar or in the same situation that I was in. It, well, you it have was a... quite a struggle. It was quite a struggle. I can, uh, yes, for sure. I mean, you were eight years old at the time? Yes, I was eight years old. And eight you had old. your mom as a single parent um, bringing you up and, well, she's done such a remarkable job because look at you now. And I'm sure she's very yeah. proud of you. You know, Dr. Uh, Shimela, like my mother has been a great, a great inspiration in my life. Uh, 2004 has been a trying year, especially for her and I. Because after two months uh, of my father's passing, my little brother was born. And then she had to juggle a both being a, responsi a responsibility of, had the responsibility of being a new mother to another baby boy. And then now the, when there was no any sort of source of income. It was a challenge. I remember this other time I had to go on a school field trip, but I couldn't afford it. My mother had to sell some of her jewelry so that she can pay my school fees and the field trip. She has contributed a lot. She was like, my kid is not gonna go to other public school. I'm gonna continue where my husband has, le has left off. And then she has tried. And to be quite honest, by the time she was not even working, I don't know how she has done it until now. You know, it's one thing, um, it's quite mysterious. 
you know, I thank God for her. I think, you know, uh, me speaking as a single parent as well, uh, you know, I lost my husband when my daughter was four years old. And uh, being a single parent, I think God just gives us the strength to carry on and provide for our children. And I think that's exactly what happened here. But also it has to take a strong woman to raise kids like you, because um, mm -hmm. I'm sure she's really smiling now and so proud of you. And it Thank must have been you. really traumatic losing your dad when she was pregnant for your brother. So yes, I, can, I can imagine the trauma that went through the family. But just, um, Natabo, mm -hmm. I'm quite intrigued by what you've done at the police station. Uh, do you maybe want to just mention some of it? You know, why did you get involved in the South African police services? And, and how did you get involved uh, as a uh, junior station commander? Commander. Okay. Taking a, a bit of a retreat, going back to uh, what I've stated before, I, could, I didn't know how to read. So I had, again, phobia of standing in front of people because whenever I had to stand in front of people, people would laugh because they knew I couldn't read. So the moment, the moment I started having the ability of reading, standing in front of people, there was a competition that was introduced in high school of becoming a junior station commander. And then that's when I started actually tapping into public speaking. Um, I was already within public speaking, but I didn't win any, any competition. But this one was very close to my heart because my father was a police officer. So this police officer who was Kitchen Mark came to our school. He's like, we have a competition. Um, learners need to enter. They need to prepare a speech for five minutes. And then they need to come and visit the police station. I went there and then we took notes of what, what is done at the police station and then what are challenges that they need along the way. And then I wrote everything down. I wrote everything down. I went online and I did research. And I remember this was quite close to my, 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 my heart. I told my mom, I told my mother, I was like, this thing, I have to win it. I really, really, really had to win it because when my father passed away, she got, she got promote, he got promoted into being a captain. So he didn't quite live to become, uh, you know, the captain that he was positioned to be. So this was quite big, being a junior station commander. And I was like, this is, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for myself and I'm going to do it in honor of my late father. And I did the competition. I remember when I went on stage, I was shivering, really shivering. But I knew, I knew that I had prepared quite very well. When I started speaking, something take, took over. And that's why I like sharing with people that I think my father was there and he was the one speaking on my behalf. And I spoke everything from the heart and going out. The visions that I had within the community of Wunerboom and things that I wanted to achieve. Uh, with the junior station commander, I won. I couldn't believe it. Yo, I remember, I couldn't believe it. On my way from the school to the bus station, from the bus station to town and from town going home, I just couldn't believe it. I was busy processing it. It was uh, something big to, to, to win. And I remember I got home and I told my mother that I had won this thing. I couldn't believe until the next day I went to school and people started congratulating me. And something my principal stated, he said, if you don't know this guy, you'll never know him, you know? Um, I think my principal saw something in me, Mr. Heben, uh, that a lot of people couldn't see. Um, he believed in me so much and some other teachers. And then within the junior station commander, we achieved a lot. We went to different schools, educating young people uh, on crime and what crime can do and affect, how can it really affect your life and what are the consequences of it, you know. And then again, we took kids who caused troubles within their communities and within schools. And then we did uh, prison visitation so that they can see life, you know, within those walls of confinement so that they know and then they can get to see how people live within those um, confinements so that they know that they shouldn't even go into crime, they should change their lives. You know, it has been a journey and a two. And I have grown out of that, you know. I think I've honored my father uh, through that, you know, and it gives me great pride that I managed to do something that he was closer to his heart. So I became a captain, which he wished to become because, you know, death is not something that you wish to embark into. I think his time was up and then, yeah, it was God's will. Definitely. And uh, look at you now. So, um, yes, it's, it's very difficult. And I'm sure you went through a difficult time losing your dad because I think you, you sound like you come from such a close-knit family. And, uh, yes, you know, yeah. losing a parent is, is a big deal. Um, yes, so I'm sorry is. about that. But, uh, you know, you're there now and you're hoping to leave a legacy. What type of legacy would you leave behind? 
Okay, right now, the type of legacy I want to leave behind is that I want to give South African kids something that even the constitution itself can take away from them, which is education. I'm going within the education sector, and then right now we're busy building a course, like I've stated with Dr. Anton, within the research of preventative medicine, integrative medicine. So it's something that is quite close to my heart that I'm actually helping other kids breach, have a bridge towards their dreams. So education is one of the key points that I would like to emphasize within and then help other kids become what they want to become. You know, with the institute that we are, that I'm about to build right now, we're gonna start online and then as soon as we have raised enough money, then we're gonna start building the actual building. And then, yeah, I can't wait for the whole thing. And then going through the whole experience of helping um, young people and then see the potential within their eyes, it's quite touching and it's quite close to my heart. That's the legacy I, I would like to, to leave behind. Education, with education, you can achieve a lot you know, education is quite vital within self-development and it's something that I quite like preaching to young people. Self-development is vital because when you are, when you have developed uh, yourself fully enough, I don't think anything can even move you. When people come into your life and people live within your life, you still have those things that you've achieved and they keep you moving and then they keep giving you purpose on what you have to achieve and what you can do to touch, touch other people's life. Self-development is vital. I can't emphasize on that. Educating yourself, you do not only empower yourself, but you also empower other people. And it's something that's going to sustain you for life. Such great words coming from a 24 year old. Just on that, <laughs> what is your purpose? My purpose. My purpose. Um, I don't think I'm. I don't think I was made uh, to 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 become maybe for example become right right now I'm going in within the teaching uh, a profession and the health profession. I don't think I was uh, really made for for, for those confinement. Um, the kids who are struggling within African countries because of wars and all. I'm a humanitarian at heart, and I think that's where God wants me to become. I think that's where my purpose lies to. When I joined the uh, Doctors Without Borders, I saw with, uh, the challenges that we're facing, and I remember that I am going to contribute every month towards, um, towards the organization. So every month there's a transaction taking place within my account, mm. donating, donating, donating towards uh, the, 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 the the organization so it's me and humanitarian work i won't stop now so there are a lot of things that i'm doing and then they are within the humanity thing and i think that's where my purpose lies you are definitely a person to watch so i'm going to be looking out for you in a few <laughs> years time and i'm going to follow your journey because i know there's bigger things coming your way yes, but any other inspiration that you want to give out there to the youth Inspiration that I like to give up to the youth, whatever, whatever opportunity that you see, seize it, take it, believe in yourself, and then don't let anybody tell you what you cannot do. Stop asking people for validations on things that have been placed in your heart. When God gives you something in your heart and you place it and you love it, God knew very well and trusted you with that thing. So take it, execute it. Don't just sit back and dream. Put action within your dreams. I like stating this to, to kids, especially when I go into life coaching. And when you have a dream every month, do something that is going to push you closer to that vision or that dream. I'm telling you, the dream are going to start coming into reality. And I love seeing that, especially with myself. I love practicing what I preach and I love what I'm seeing. So I would love to push a lot of young people into it. Um, two years back, I joined um, the HIV AIDS movement. Um, the um, within the university. So it was quite intriguing when I went into the HIV and AIDS counseling. Um, you know, when I met a lot of young people and then, you know, they would be taking uh, reckless decisions and all. It would just be nice in putting some of my motivational skills within them, guiding them and mentoring them within uh, that special uh, zone that I've been placed in. We are not talking everything uh, sexuality or and all, you know, some other aspects of life also come into it. You know, I, that's when I saw that, you know what, parents are not actually having conversations that they should be having with their kids. So when I embarked into the life coaching route, when I took the course within the life coaching course, one of my ideal goals was to motivate and empower young people so that they shouldn't see their circumstances where they're in now as, uh, as a 
block that's blocking them to being what they want to become. So I think that's one of the things that I have wanted to embark within the life coaching. A lot of kids are facing a lot of things. So, you know, being that one particular person, being a call away, because not all of the kids can afford to see a psychologist or a counselor. So offering my services for free and then having that free landline where people can just call you whenever they want to call you has been a blessing. And then me listening to them, I get empowered because I tend to put myself in their shoes and then help them maneuver throughout the situations. It has been one journey and a two, and I'm so honored that God has trusted me with this profession of becoming a life coach. So a life coach, a mentor, what other philanthropic work are you involved in? Okay, other philanthropic work that I'm involved in. Um, I started my foundation on of my father because he owned a shop uh, when he was a police officer. So he was new in the, he was known in the community of being a person who would like giving, who like giving things out to people. So I was like, you know what? I think this is the perfect way. So I would go to different preschools and high schools and preschools and I would ask learners to donate canned food. And then I would go around the community asking people who are people who are a family that needs food, who can't afford some basic things uh, within the household. And they would give me names. So every month from collecting all those canned stuff, I would deliver, you know, the canned food to those families. And then Dr. Jamila, I'm telling you, it's quite thrilling and it's quite heart fulfilling you know, seeing the expressions, knowing that some sort of a relief has just entered into your, into your heart. It's like God has answered their prayers. And then it's quite satisfactory being that particular person who puts out those things to people, who helps people. You know, it has been so fulfilling. And that's why I stopped posting some of my charity work because I decided that now it's going to be a project that's going to be close to my heart. I'm not going to do things because I want to be seen or to be known. I'm just going to do it for myself. Yes. I want next time maybe I'll start posting so that I can inspire more people so they can embark in the journey of uh, 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 philanthropic work. But for now, I just want to have that internal moment where I represent my God and then I show how, how my God can be generous, being a vessel to God to other people. I think it's important for you to post as much as possible. Um, and also collaboration is key to get other people on board to assist in your projects as well, because I'm sure, you know, with the organization, your foundation, you will be looking for a fundraiser for donors and sponsors and, um, and also with your fundraising initiatives as well. So that would be great and uh, well done. You know, I know the feeling of giving and I know how it affects people in communities, especially the impoverished. Um, just touching their hearts and giving them that love and support and, you know, giving off your time. So it seems like you're really a good doer that's doing amazing work. But your last words to people out there, I know you've said so much to inspire so many people, young and old today, but uh, where to from here, you know, any more pageants, um, anything in the pipeline, what can we expect from you? Okay. Um... I remember when I prayed for Mr. Protea, South, South Africa, I was like, God, uh, Mr. South Africa didn't work out. Can this be the last pageant that I, I, I enter? And I promise you, God, I'll do the best of my ability to make sure that every project becomes a success. So within the pageantry, this was my last one. So right now, when I open up opportunities for young people, that's where I'm going into because my light has shined on top of me and then God has granted me a lot of opportunities. So I'm going to create platforms for others now so that they can feel special the way I did, so that they can impart something to their community so that they can contribute in whatever way they can feel that it is vital for them to, 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 to contribute. And then again, right now I've uh, partnered with Project Rage with uh, Mr. Mark uh, and also Rosa Fanegger. He's, um, really? I didn't know he's, that. Uh, wow. Yeah, but, um, I just told them for now because um, I wanted to start with all my projects next year. So right now what I did is that I went to different people. Um, they have been donating to us the project. So right now I just need to dis de deposit the money that has been uh, donated to us the project. So I'm associating myself with quite a lot of projects. So um, I just recently became a health advocate with young African leaders. So I'll be venturing into health again, you know. Yeah, that's when I saw that God is actually, he literally wants me both in both sides within the education and the health industry. Um, there's more coming. I don't know where to start, Jay. I just don't know. But there's a lot of things on my goal list that needs to be achieved. 
but I would like to inspire a whole lot of people. Young people, whoever who is listening, take it, whatever opportunity that comes to you, never lose faith in who you are, remember who you are, remember who's walking behind you, you know, and then remember every person that you encounter, there's a certain amount of contribution of inspiration that you're imparting. I was inspired by you with the Princess D menstrual cups. You have shined a light for, for the girls, you know, we were facing a huge uh, challenge, especially within the sanitary towels. And then God trusted you with the idea and he gave it to you. You empowered yourself and through empowering yourself, you empowered others. And I would like young people to look up to you so that whatever they do, they empower themselves so that they can empower others. You know, uh, God has been a blessing in my life. I don't know how people move without God, but God has been a vessel. I would like all the young people to go out there Cry to God and trust God with all the ideas. Remember, everything that you love, God has placed it in your heart and he believes that you can achieve it. So don't ask for other people's validation. Believe it because God has placed it in you. You know what? Go out there, be a fighter. It's not going to be easy. Trust me, it's not. There are moments that I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up on the uh, 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 things that I wanted to do. So it's quite vital for young people to go out there. Self-empowerment first. You cannot empower others without empowering yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. Empower yourself, go out there, do what you have to do. It wasn't an easy journey become, becoming Mr. Protea South Africa. I was one of those young kids who was looked down on. And then I became something. I made a decision that I want to become something out there. And then I embarked into it. It hasn't been, it wasn't been, it, is, it hasn't been easy facing my own demons, fighting my low self-esteem. It has been a challenge standing in front of the stage where thousands of people are watching you, where you have to speak your mind and your heart, and where you have to impress judges. It hasn't been easy. And I'd like to tell young people, especially those who look up to me, don't give up on yourself. Go out there. If I can do it, so can you, you know. It has been an extraordinary journey, and I thank God for granting me such an opportunity, being the first junior station commander, being the first um, Mr. Protea South Africa, and I hope I won't be the first of the first of doing something within life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of me, and this is not the end of you. Go out there, do what you have to do, shine a light in somebody else's life, be a ring in somebody else's life, and remember all the decisions that you take right now of your life, are going to be a consequences within your future. They're going to affect your kids and your prospect uh, partner. So whatever you do now, make sure you empower yourself so that your future people can be empowered through your empowerment. Right now, I'm thinking for my future kids and the legacy that I want to leave within South Africa. That's my journey of becoming uh, Mr. Protea South Africa. I remember I said something within the speech of becoming Mr. Protea South Africa. I said, God, I want to become the prince of the people. This is not a title that I want to get from um, achieving something, but this is the service that I want to do it out of my heart to your people. I don't want to get anything out of this, Father Lord, but within your purpose that you've placed me on this earth, I hope I touch people's lives the way I want to. Princess Diana has been a great inspiration in my life, especially including her within the fellowship and you know honoring her through the fellowship. She has been a, a role model in my life. And to think that I, I was born in 1996 and she actually passed away in 1997, it shows that her legacy has lived on and it has inspired us who have come after her, you know. So I just want to go out there, motivate young people, empower them so that they can become good future leaders. It's not for me only, but I'm also creating channels for my kids also through empowering other kids so that they can open again channels for my kids. So... Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the interview. Thank you so much. Wow. I could go on listening to you all day, the table. You are such yes, an inspiration, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to learn from you today. Just yes, to have that force in you, you know, you, you're out there, you're aggressive, you, you're disruptive, and you want to achieve, <laughs> and you're going to achieve. So well done, yes, and congratulations on everything that you've done so far. And I can see you going a long way because you are determined, motivated, and you're going to make a real difference, not only in South Africa, but across the world. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for being a great inspiration in my life. I hope someday, uh, maybe in December, I could meet you for a cup of coffee so that we can discuss. I would like to collaborate in your project, especially the menstrual cups. Um, a tax mentor at um, University of Pretoria has in high school. So all kids from different 
background rural areas they come within uh, uh, Pretoria within this high school so they have they are, they, they are faced with a lot of challenges especially the, the, the menstruation things ladies also I would like to partner with you I would like to invest some portion of money there so that I can get them the menstrual cups you know I think would that's be of amazing help. That's amazing because I'm currently working with tax, uh, with health services, uh, with the menstrual cup, if you don't know, if you didn't know. So no, I didn't know, I didn't know altogether. So, yeah, uh, so this is a new high school. So, yeah, so they are identifying talents within kids who have athletics, uh, uh, potentials, uh, abilities and skills. So they place them here so that they can achieve their dreams beyond their circumstances back at home. You know, I was touched by one story when Elena was called by a parent and then Elena took a monthly, so we have a trust within the school where the trust uh, gives kids uh, their monthly allowance. And then the kid was like, I'm going to send my 300 rand that I have uh, gotten from the school. So it touched me that kids are facing uh, parental responsibilities as young as they are and then contributing in whatever ways within their social structure. And then I wanted to make a difference within that i'm still working on it i need to put my head into it so wow. thank you for the opportunity so i want to work around that too yeah. no for sure absolutely and also you know just talking about the princess d menstrual cup we did a school in social Gove as well uh yes, with the national research foundation uh two years ago i think uh, so i did yes, come out to social Gove. yes Wow, 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 wow. you know ma'am uh, when i saw that project i was like wow god has painted somebody especially facing the situation you know we as men we tend to look down on it you know we don't invest as much as we're supposed to and that's why i went into this field of pageantry because we don't have a lot of male role models so if you can hear a lot of young people they'll tell you most about female versions of their role model i wanted to change the whole concept of that introduce men into philanthropic work and i hope i get to inspire a lot of young men to go into that route so with you the princess d menstrual cup you know, ma'am, it has been a, a great blessing. I think you've been a great blessing within South Africa, within the challenge that we have faced. Please don't give up now. Continue doing the great work that you're doing. Thank you so much. I actually miss the girls because of the, I would say, plus minus 400 schools that we covered in South Africa, over 350 I was actively involved in where I went out into the communities across all nine provinces. Mm -hmm. Yo, 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 yo. So you have been working ma'am i saw some of your, 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 your um contributions around uh, south africa I was like now this is a lady on the move you know literally i can just imagine the difference that you have made the stress of a school child who couldn't go to school because of uh, the time of the month now a child a girl child can now go to school without thinking about that knowing that no my menstrual cup is in the bag so all is sorted you know it's a nightmare to ladies and Thank you for being you, and then you have been a God's vessel. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. It's really heartwarming to see the differences making in the lives of the girls, because last year um, a matriculant that came from Mpumalanga, who was in the uh, top, I think she was in the top matriculants in that area, in that province, and uh, she uses the Princess D menstrual cup, and we kept her in school, and that is the oh, whole wow. initiative, keeping girls in school. Natawa, we're running out of time, but I could speak to you forever. I wish you everything of the best going forward, and I know you're going to achieve a lot in your life and make a huge impact uh, across the globe. So thank you for coming on board, and all the best, and we will chat soon. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Shamila. This won't be the last time. I hope we have another interview. Thank you. No, definitely we, we're going to have another interview, and we're going to have that coffee date as well. Yes, yeah, ma'am, I'll keep you, I'll keep note of that. I can't wait to see you. And then we have a lot to talk about. Thank you, ma'am. For sure. Take care. Bye. Bye, ma'am.